In the previous couple of videos, we've assumed that the homozygous wild type is the most fit genotype. However, occasionally we encounter a situation where the heterozygote is the most fit. The classic example here is sickle cell anemia, which is caused by a mutation in the gene for hemoglobin. When the mutant gene is homozygous, the hemoglobin proteins polymerize, and it causes red blood cells to deform, and it leads to pain and anemia and susceptibility to infection and stroke. Untreated, individuals with sickle cell disease do not reproduce. However, in regions where the disease malaria is endemic, heterozygotes are actually resistant to malaria, which gives them a higher fitness relative to wild-type homozygotes. So how does this work out mathematically? Let's say that the dominant allele, A, has a frequency of P, and that the recessive allele, little a, has a frequency of Q. And as usual, we're going to say that the most fit genotype in this case, it's the heterozygote has a fitness of 1. Now, let's say that the homozygous dominant genotype has a fitness of 1 minus s, right, less than 1, and the fitness of the homozygote recessive is 1 minus t. At equilibrium, the frequency of the dominant individuals, the frequency of the uh, homozygous dominant individuals, I should say, is p squared. The frequency of the homozygous recessive individuals is q squared. And so, the proportion of dominant alleles that are lost each, each generation due to selection right, the dominant of big A alleles that are lost each generation due to selection is P squared times S over p. Remember, this is the proportion of alleles that are lost, which is why we're dividing by p here. Similarly, at equilibrium, the frequency of, remember, the homozygous recessive genotype is q squared, and so the proportion of recessive alleles that are lost each generation is q squared times t over Q. And of course, at equilibrium, these two proportions are balanced. And so, we can cancel out a P and a Q on each side, and then we replace Q on this side with 1 minus P. Right, because remember that P and Q are frequencies, and so P plus Q equals 1. So we'll, re we'll replace Q on this side with 1 minus P. And now we can simply solve for P. Right, and so thus, after some algebra, we find that P hat is... The e remember, p hat is the equilibrium frequency for um, our allele big A over here, is t over s plus t. And similarly, using the same process, we find that q hat, the equilibrium frequency for our little, uh, little a allele, is s over s plus t. What does this look like in the real world? Well, in the malaria example, we estimate that the homozygous dominant selection coefficient, um, 
Well, so we estimate that the homozygous fitness is about 0.85, right? Remember the heterozygous, um, the, the, the heterozygous fitness is one and the homozygous recessive fitness, these individuals do not reproduce if they're untreated and so they're zero. And so in this case, S equals 0 0.15 and T equals one. And so if you run the math using these equations right here, you find that the predicted allele frequency for the dominant allele, right, is one over 0 0.15 plus one is about 87%. Whereas the predicted recessive allele frequency at equilibrium 0 0.15 over 0 0.15 plus 1 is about 13 percent. And these values, it turns out, are reasonably close to the values that we actually see in many parts of West Africa where malaria is endemic. Often I think that we think about evolution as being driven by the creation of entirely new genes. And while, of course, new genes are occasionally created, as we will see next week, creating new genes happens slowly, while selection like this can change allele frequencies much more rapidly. How these ideas apply to the evolution of human populations will be next week's topic.